Hi, it is I, John underscore, Silva underscore, you <laughs> very How are you doing? Uh, also, I guess, YouTuber as well. Hi, what's up? Uh, today we have Spoko for Silva Decos and also a fly. Uh, and Spoko asks, Hi, John, how does Alex Mandrayev achieve this cinematic ish kind of look in all of his works? And what kind of references should I study to create the same feeling? So these are two different questions. I'll answer the later one, which is, as someone actually mentioned earlier on in chat, which is framed ink is omega good um, for this kind of like cinematic slash, it's just overall composition. And your question, I was actually wondering what, like, what, what, what are you asking of me specifically? I mean, achieving the cinematic look could mean a lot of things. This is the effects, composition. So we just ended up deciding that. You're probably talking about the lighting slash composition. Um, and I will teach you exactly that. The main thing, literally the main thing you gotta look uh, for is people pog. Let's just make a quick little canvas thing there. Um, so the first thing is in the thumbnail stage, um, your image should read very well in black and white. So in his case, he's got like, I'm gonna oversimplify what he has here. Like he has, the wings are very clear on what they are. And then you get like the guy here, leg, you know, and then like the, I believe that's Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man shape. I'm gonna make like a very like infant like drawing of this, but I just wanna show you that even if it looks like your child just doodled on your screen, you should still read sort of like the action, you know, kind of kind of thing. Let's just do that for now. I, I will fix this, but first point is how the shadow and light, um, Oh, uh, by the way, you can do line arts. I'll show both ways. Okay, so we kind of like light outlines Spider-Man here at the bottom. Uh, you can do both ways. You can do that. You can go in with uh, like fill in the uh, fill in the shapes. You know, kind of like just do this, and then you sculpt it out, which I believe is what he might have done, um, or at least parts of it look like. So he'll just kind of like block in shapes. Like that, and then with a razor, he'll erase parts out. And this is like a really fun way to play with negative versus positive. Negative means like the the dark parts, and the positive is the the white part um, of the canvas. So you're just gonna like do this, this, and that, All right? And you just keep sculpting until you got some shapes that you like. Like so. Right. Uh, either way is fine. It's really up to preference, to be honest. So I'm just gonna like do that, 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 and this, and um, and let, let's just keep it at that for now. And I'll just do the little leg here. Okay. And he's grabbing Spider-Man. And of course you want to fill in the, the Spider-Man as well. So uh, we're going to do this. So this is the first step that I would go on to create a really effective uh, sort of like cinematic composition. It's all about, uh, you also will notice that he goes quite, quite graphical in his shapes. So what that really means is like, um, you can clearly see if something is a triangle or a mix of triangles with squares uh, versus like going more on the realistic side of things. Everything is, about, is a lot more subtle. Here, you don't want to be subtle. At least in his case, you wouldn't want to. You want everything to be sort of like either jagged or it's extremely clear that what I'm painting right now, it's a leg, you know? Even is 
even if you don't see any colors or any values, you can kind of like tell when everything is, oh God, this looks horrible. Everything is um, sort of, you can tell that there's a person and there's like a guy either kicking or grabbing or whatever, you know, at this, this, you can, this area here, you kind of guess when it's just like one solid shape. Uh, but that's when lighting will come to play. So th this is the second part to it, is that um, you, okay, let's say, keep the little little hand in there, the leg, the leg here as well, the booty, spidey booty, and let's pretend we're okay with this, right? Because this is not a study, Is uh, the goal isn't to make this as amazingly looking as him. No one can be as amazing as him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but also, it's a tall order. Um, so let's pretend we're okay with this. Um, so second part would be to sculpt the light into the shape. So for example, doing little holes. Like, okay, so now we know that there's probably some gog goggles in there, you know? Um, and uh, let's make the wing here and make the light sort of like cut into shapes like this and in the leg, for example, add little empty spaces or positive spaces, however you want to call it, you know, light, positive space or whatever. You sort of like start drawing and you and you're still thinking about shape. It really is all about shapes, you know. The reason why you can tell that this might be a leg, or this might be like a robo robo leg, is because of the shapes you're utilizing. You know, if uh, in this particular case, going in with a lot of squares, a lot of rectangle shapes will give you that look where the light is hitting. If you want more like organic, aka like rounded shapes then it could maybe look like something else. Um, so just think of stuff like that would be super helpful, you know? Um, so this is the, the the reason why I'm only doing this part like this is because he, in a lot of his work, um, Alex does, like, like he wants you to look at one spot uh, most of the time, not all in all of his work, but a lot of the times you'll notice like this is the focal point the, everything else is really fucking cool don't get me wrong but here there's the highest contrast of light which is here of shadow and uh, mid-tones as well it's it's right there in the legs um, and he does a lot of this in his work it's literally the main the main selling point at least when I look at his stuff his main selling point is is incredibly clear to see what was what's his intentions, and that's how I would approach when uh, if you want to do similar. Um, but think of it as like a spotlight. You know, you have a whole scene, and then you just want to spotlight one area. Um, I feel like his work is very very much like that, and that's why it's great because it's so easy to tell what's happening. No matter the size, you know, no matter the size of the image. Um, hi, LGN, what's up? So uh, we're not done yet. So from this point on, you got every. Honestly, this is done. <laughs> I know there's no colors, there's no blah blah blah, but I'll explain. Um, you have achieved what is pretty much necessary. Everything else will be that you will add to this is icing on the cake plus um, readability and mood, right? So if you want to make some areas clearly more readable, you're gonna introduce a third value to it. So you have pure white. Uh, I believe this is not pure black. Let's, let's make it pure black or close to, all right? And now I'm, um, one second, let me just crop forgot to crop this. There you go. Perfect. Um, now, uh, you have, uh, I clip, I made a new layer that clipped 
onto this shape here. Um, I can. It's it's pretty simple to do uh, if you guys don't know how to. But I just clipped uh, a new layer onto the shadow layer or whatever you want to call it, the negative layer, and I'm gonna introduce a mid tone value to it. So this could imply many things. It could be like the leg area, you know, sort of like how he does with um, uh, like the pants. Let's let's do the pants. You know, it's like a, a slightly a lighter color here and there. Uh, you're gonna have a, like a lot more areas here, and then you have like the blue, right? Uh, by the way, I'm not adding colors right now because the reason why it looks cinematic in the way it does, it's all thanks to the first part that I just talked about and the, um, like how intense the lighting is and how contrasty the lighting is. So showing you in black and white is going to be easier for you to like notice the differences. Again, I'm using these decodes are like sort of like I'm trying to be educational as well with it instead of just like oh this is how you literally do that so I'm just teaching you a little bit more on you know I, I will add the colors if you want so I'm just kind of like show, showing you where his mind might have been at when creating the image or it, what could we like decode through the lens of his mind sort of thing and this is just one of the many ways you could go go about it and do it also yeah you'll notice here there's really not that many values like even spider-man is kind of like my extremely wonky spider-man it's just like the red is slightly lighter value you know the red of him like this and then like on the legs and th this is it like as far as like color and values this is it. everything else is a refinement so when i say refinement i'm gonna merge these two layers so everything is one layer now so when I when I say refinement I mean like even the um, like all of the details like for example in his leg like all of the brush strokes that he has and the divisions and all that it, this is incredibly um, like just small additions that will help sell uh the readability of some of some uh, places so what i mean by that is like you know you're looking at a leg but what does the leg what, what is the leg composed of you know what i mean um so he goes in and he adds those little like for example right now we don't know it's raining but because he'll add those little like even in just black and white you can tell the moment i do this you can tell that yo it's raining you know what I mean like little little specks and stuff like this you just go like oh this is absolutely raining you know uh, of course like he spends probably enough time to make it all look pretty etc I will add color to this do not worry but I just need you to understand that before you even like get into color you should understand this you know and there you go like it's raining and then from this point on you can you can add like all the little like um lines all the little like details to make it seem like more realistic as well because you know the more information you add the more our brains I, I, up until a certain point but i think it's safe to add some more like little squeak squiggles and our mind will whatever it's like dark and even if you don't can't tell what some things are our mind will fill in the empty space because we have pretty good imagination I'd say humans um, and honestly that's about that's about it when it comes to like making an image cinematic I forgot that there's this side here of the claw right it's kind of like goes around here and this is the claw he's like Wah! catching the guy now from this point on you can take it however you want. I'll I'll add colors just I don't know, just so you guys have something else to but honestly this is the end. <laughs> this is the end of the video. Everything else is going to be mood and gradients. Uh, and gradients is I was also I would also include the gradients as a mood a mood thing. 
you know. Um, the effects that he makes, I'll be honest with you, I'm not too sure how he how he does it. I'll be the first to admit. I think it's a. I mean, my best guess would be to. I mean, I can replicate it, but I don't know what is the real way that he does it. Um, it's a mix of texture brushes, and then he'll like either stretch out or actually decompress um, his textures to give that like old look. You know, like I, I believe he on purpose lowers down the qual quote unquote the quality or. Lures on, yeah, I'd say lures on the quality of his uh, images to have that granular look, I think. Now, I'm not sure if that is the case, but I can sort of mimic that with um, with this kind of brush. Where is it? I made a brush one of these episodes that had multiple colors. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, where is it? Oh, you know what? I'll just show you now. So... In Photoshop, you can go to color dynamics and you can have this like multi color thing. Right? You can sort of like do that with any brush. So I'm going to do that with this one. I'm just sort of like going to add some of that here and there. Uh, you see how it kind of like you start having that effect a little bit. Um, he probably uses uh, something like this. Let's try that. I mean, that's the point of the whole decodes is to figure out how to do some people do some things. Oh, I'm getting close, close enough, <laughs> close enough. He probably uh, he could even like just do a bunch of this and then just stretch it out. Like I'll show you, like just add a bunch of this kind of like things and then just go wow oh i think i'm oh shit i don't know if i'm right or wrong but it's it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of close you know just like he'll i do think he compresses his images to make it like more uh like you found an old file kind of kind of thing pretty sure And I mean that's part of his like style as well. Like I I love that. I love that he does that. You know what I mean? Uh, of course we lost the light and shadow of that, but I will add it in a second. And he adds a lot of granular uh, effects to it, whether that's like through brush brushes or um, actual Photoshop, like you know, adding noise. Uh, you can you can add them either way, but most importantly, we, I should actually look at my values here. Uh, so the light is another thing is that so compositionally, I should mention this that the light is following the the um, motion. So you'll see that the direction of the shadow and light are like this, right? So everything he adds has sort of like a Think of it as light and shadow as act, like action lines, which I feel like he does a lot of that. He he frames his frame he frames his images very very much with, um, with his light. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of like do this. Like so. Mine is a little bit more vibrant. He's a little more desaturated, but that's okay. Um, now for the lighting um, on the character, I mean, you can, uh, I'm gonna add. Yeah, the lighting on the character is a lot of gradients. Like I'm just, I'm just adding the white back to be honest right now. Uh, I can just do this and then just work with the gradients and finish the image. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did this after the fact, like on top. I'm going like reversed. <laughs> I'm going reverse ways for this. Uh, but either way works. So like right now, I'll just make a new layer on top and I'll go in and, and add like the uh, 
a little bit of color from the backgrounds, a little bit of color here, there, like sort of like this, you know. Um, the lighting, is, my color is too blue, so he like sort of like paint over what he has built on, if that makes any sense. Uh, let me grab some blue. He likes this blue. No, it needs to be more, more blue, less purple. All right. So like this, also darker. And yeah, like I said in the very beginning, where you place it and you leave it like just blank or dark or like disappear into the shadows, that's that's his signature. You know, that is his signature. Obviously, once again, just like every other decodes video, this is just uh, one way to do it. I don't know if this is exactly how he did it or not, but that's why it's, these are fun to do. It's just to figure out how can we how can we uh, find the way he did it or figure out a way to do it, let's, like make it look the same or as close as possible, you know? And then after the fact, once he has everything done, he just literally goes there with his brush, just like adds, adds the light, you know? Sort of like just blah, 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 you know, just keep on going. Like so he's he's very very graphic uh, when it comes to this sort of stuff. Now the rain and everything else. Uh, I didn't do Spider Man. Uh, do you guys really need Spider Man? You guys you guys don't need Spider Man. If you need Spider Man? I'll just add the colors. Okay, colors are gonna be enough. Very muted. But you you do the same for Spider Man. What I've done for the Bird Boy. You do for pretty much for Spider Man. Type of deal. All right. And mine is even a little too, like, yours needs, it needs to be more sharp. He definitely uses a lot of sharp brushes, for these ones at least. Maybe his other work, not so much, but he loves textured brushes. Um, he loves his sharp, sharp brush strokes, which is super cool. I love it too. And, um, and the eyes just need to have, like, bring back some of that focal point back to the eyes like you know okay so for everything else like the special effects uh i think he adds on top i'm gonna merge one second there you go so i there's so many ways to do the um, there's so many ways to do the, 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 the fucking rain. I forgot the word rain. Um, I'll show you one way. So sort of like this, you'll see. Um, he could use photo textures. I believe he might use them. I'm just gonna do it manually. Sort of like this and now uh go to i believe i haven't done this in a while uh filter uh, d -d 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 blur and i think it's motion blur it might be motion blur oh okay um i kind of doubt this is how he looking at it now this is how he did it he probably used he did mul this multiple times or he used a photo texture or he did it manually either way is fine um there's a better one i think it's called a radial radial blur i'm also going to duplicate the amount of dots there is on the screen should be the effect should be better um all right uh, filter, wait, yeah, filter in Photoshop, and then radial blur. Yeah, and then you select zoom, and you sort of like edit where you assume the thing to be. So kind of like top left, press OK. People pog. Uh, mine was a little too, 
thing. Let's do it again. Blur. Mine was a little too not 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 tall enough or up enough. Blur, motion blur. Fuck, radial blur, not motion blur. Radial, radial blur. Let's do that. And ah, uh, okay, whatever. I'll just readjust it manually, paper life. Uh, but I'm starting to begin to, to think that, that he did it way, way. Like he may, may have used a couple of uh, ways, including manually. So maybe photo texture, maybe a mix of this and that, and then going in there with it, with manually, you know, sort of like adding those little blah, 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 you know. Oh, that's too, too sharp. Like sort of like following this, and I, I, yeah, it may it may have been like a mix of the two. Now you see how it's like how there's like multi colors. I'm not gonna spend too much time doing this. I'm just showing you like, you know, the silver silver decodes will never have good look. Like my my side will never look as good because uh, not only are they amazing, but also. Uh, I don't know, this this video would be like fucking forty minutes long or 50 minutes long or more and we don't want that um, so I'm gonna leave it as is I'm just gonna show you the rest to like complete sort of the look um, I'm just gonna dislike I at least want to clean up this leg a little bit the artist in me wants to clean up the leg a little bit okay all right um, so I believe if I make a new layer and I think it may be hard light. I'm gonna go with hard light. Hard light mode, new layer, and sort of like add the um, the effects you see, like coming out, coming off from like different directions and all that. This sort of stuff. I believe he definitely used some. Yep. Yep, cut. Yep. So I'm just gonna go around. I'm using whatever brush. You can use whatever brush you want as well. Like I even like a soft brush for some of this, some of this stuff. You know, but I would go as far as to say that yeah, he probably used a hard light, or at least hard light makes it look like pretty similar. Hard light layer. There it is. I'm just kind of like adding this and. Uh, oh, there's some glow here and there, like a pale yellow. Uh, I think mine is a little too, too, in, too crazy, or pale brown, right on his leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems to be the case. Except mine is a bit more intensive, and uh, just sort of like go through that. And then obviously there's the drop droplets. The droplets. You can you can use a normal layer for this. Honestly, just like wait with a with a softer edge. There you go. So I just made normal round brush, soft edge. I just kind of like go around and uh, just add those. You know, blah 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 blah. Maybe erase some of them, huh? Huh? Look at that! Look at that! Huh? On the wing? On the wing? Let's do that again. On the wing, huh? Let's erase it just a little bit, huh? What about that? And the other one on there? Yeah, I mean, we'll erase it a little bit. And you're good. Sorry for the sniffles. My nose is fucked, mate. Oi. Oi, mate. You know, just do one of those and uh, we're done. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more to it. Uh, Color-wise, like, there's the blue that's really pretty around the character. Like, I'll actually do it just a little bit. We could... Again, I could keep going, you know, his work is incredible, but like there's this this really deep blue around him sort of like thing. I might I may I'm over exaggerating it, but like there's all like there's that, etc. Et Anyways, it's close enough, right? So um hope you enjoyed uh <laughs> these uh, decodes and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget that tier one subs can request uh decodes on our Discord, join our Discord, join our stream, blah, 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 blah.
See you on the next one. Bye.